Hey, this is George Mazzell, Super Magnet Man. I'm back with you to, to go over the third passage now. This is one of my favorites. It's on electricity and magnet, I mean electricity, not magnetism. That's my favorite subject, but it's on electricity. Now, let's take a look at this in passage three. Now, again, this would have been good if you've already done this passage and now you're going through this for a review. Passage three. An electrical circuit contained a 12 volt battery, a resistor, which is a device that measures, I mean, that resists the flow of electricity, a capacitor, which is a device that stores electrical charge and electrical energy, a voltmeter, which is an instrument that for measuring electrical voltage, and a switch, as shown in figure one. And each of these items is labeled. You can see it in the picture that it's labeled this way. Now, we skip down to the experiment. Let's see what our experiment is. Experiment one says the students used a 1 times 10 to the 7 ohm resistor and a capacitor with a capacitance of 1 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. Capacitance is a measure of a maximum amount of electrical charge and electrical energy a capacitor can store. The capacitor was initially uncharged at time zero. The student simultaneously closed the switch and started a stopwatch. At time zero and 12 second intervals thereafter, they recorded the voltage across the capacitor and the results are shown in table one. Every time you come to a table, take just a minute and look and see what is the information. Look at your headings. This is time in seconds in the left column going down. Voltage across the capacitor. Notice your numbers, what's happening. As time increases, the voltage increases. They've given you this information for a reason and you'll see in a minute, but I want you to get used to looking at a table and getting information at first glance. It'll make it so much quicker when you get to the questions to come back to the right table and get the right answer. Experiment two. Using a 1 times 10 to the 7 ohm resistor and several different capacitors, students determined the length of time from when the switch was closed until the voltage across the capacitor reached 6 volts. The results are shown in table 2. Here we've got capacitance and time to reach 6 volts. As you see this, as the capacitance, now this table's different, as the capacitance decreases, look at what's happening to our time required to reach 6 volts. Now we've got that sort of plugged into our mind. Experiment three, the students conducted the same procedure as described in experiment two, except that they used a constant capacitance this time, and they used several different resistors, and this is the results here. As we see the resistance goes down, the time required to reach the voltage goes down. Now, one of the things to notice is it's a very key part of science, is to test every variable. So we've got this circuit, They've tested the time that it takes with everything in place. They've tested it by varying of resistances and by varying capacitances. That gives us enough information to answer the questions. If we look at, at question 14, in experiment one, the time constant of the circuit was the time required for the voltage of the capacitor across the capacitor to reach approximately 7.6 volts. The time constant of the circuit used in experiment one was, okay, we're looking for 7.61 volts, 7.6 volts. We look over at the table one, and we see all we have is a zero and an 8.4. We get to 8.4 volts in 12 seconds. We don't know how long it takes to get to 7.6, but we know it's less than 12 seconds, and that's answer F. Number 15, if in experiment two, a 1.5 times 10 to the minus six farad capacitor had been used, the time required for the voltage across the capacitor to reach six volts would have been closest to what? Okay, this is one of those extrapolates again. If you look up here, your table only goes up to 1.2. And at 1.2, we're getting 8.3 seconds, but we need 1.5. So we know, if you just look at this, you know right off A and B are wrong. They're, that's not near enough time. But we don't know for sure, is it 10 and a half or 15 seconds? So we go back and see, how much did it change from 0.6 farads to, I mean, 0.6 times 10 to the minus six farads to the 1.2? If you look over here, it went from 4.2 to 8.3. Well, we're going up 0.3. Farad. So we don't know how much it is, but it's a little bit more. It's not double. If we were going to 2.4, it'd be pretty close to double. But we're only going up a little bit. So it's probably going to be C, 10.5 seconds. Now we go to the next question, number 16. The main purpose of experiment three was to determine how varying what? We'll go to experiment three. What are they varying in experiment three? They're varying the resistance. You see, that's what it means in this table, 0 0.75, 0 0.5, and 0.25. Now we look at the questions. Was, were we going to determine how varying the battery's voltage affected the resistor's resistance? We didn't vary the battery's voltage. The battery is a constant voltage source. C, uh, G, the capacitor's capacitance. We didn't, uh, we didn't fool with the capacitor's capacitance in experiment three. That was experiment two. 
H, capacitors, capacitors, once again, rules itself out with the first two words. There is nothing they can write after these two words that's going to make the answer correct. The answer is wrong because it says capacitors, capacitance, when all we're looking at is the resistor in experiment three. So it has to be J. The resistor's resistance affected the time required for the voltage across the capacitor to reach a set value. That's exactly what experiment three was. Now we look at 17. They like these kinds where they're going to give you these diagrams and let you try and figure out which one answers the question. And the question says, based on figure one, to measure the voltage across the resistor only, which of the following circuits should one use? Well, if you look at this, there's only one that has the voltmeter, the little device with the V in the center of it, just like they showed it and had labeled over here in the picture. There's only one that has that device right across the resistor. So it has to be answer A. Number 18, consider a circuit like the one shown in figure one. Based on experiments two and three, the voltage across the capacitor will reach a given value in the shortest amount of time. It takes the least amount of time if the circuit contains which of the following capacitances and resistances. Okay, down the left side of these, this is what I call a divide and conquer type question. In the left side, we've got point ones and 1.2s. So which one's better on the farad capacitor? So we go over here, look at our table. Well, the 0.1 farad capacitor only takes 7 tenths of a second. That is a lot faster than a 1.2, which takes 8.3 seconds. So it has to be either F or G. So now we look at the other side of it. We've got the resistances. 0.3 times 10 to the 7 and 1 times 10 to the 7 ohm resistances. Looking at this, we say, well, which one of those was better? We don't even have a 0.3 or a 1 resistance, but we have enough information. We've got a 0.25 and a 0.5, and we see that that value is less than the 0.75. Well, a 1.0 would be more than the 0.75. It's, it's logical for us to assume that. that the ACT is not going to give you data that doesn't follow a logical flow process. If you see the numbers are starting to go up, you can expect them to keep going up for within the range they're going to ask the questions. So in this case, we know that the 0.3 takes less time than a 1, fair, one times 10 to the 7 ohm resistance would. So in looking at that, the answer has to be F. Now we go to 19. Consider the following hypothesis. In a circuit arranged as in figure 1, the containing a battery, a capacitor, and a constant resistance, as capacitance increases, so remember, as capacitance is increasing, the time required to reach a given voltage across the capacitor increases. Do the experiments support this hypothesis? Well, we come over to our table. This is one of those things you want to be really careful with with the ACT. In this case, the numbers start with the large number and go down. That's decreasing. So increasing, we come over and start at the point one and draw a little arrow going up to help remind us. This is increasing, starting from the bottom up. So as I go point one, that matches up with this point seven, increasing to the 8.3 at the top. So as capacitance increases, the time required to reach it increases. That answers the question. So it has to be one of the two yeses. So is it either A or B? Well, let's look at A. A says, yes, in experiment one, as capacitance increased. Wait a minute. What happened in experiment one? Experiment one, what we've done is hooked up a fixed circuit, and we're just recording the capacitance, ev I mean, the uh, voltage, every 12 seconds. So that's not what we did. We didn't vary capacitance there, so that one has to be wrong. B, yes, in experiment two, as capacitance increased, the time required to reach a given voltage increased. Now, give you a little tip here to help speed things up. When you look at this and you have an A and a B, if you rule out A, it has to be B. You don't need to waste time evaluating B. Now, if you're not sure, you can still read through B, but one of the little tips is you start speeding up, you're going to realize if it's not A, it had to be B. It's got to be A or B. If it's not one, it's the other. Okay, that's it for passage three now. Go ahead and read passage four. We'll go over it in just a minute. Thanks.